Okay, in a pre previous video, we talked about the app broker folder structure, the default structure. And we clarified that in order to deploy our app, first we have to understand how to deploy it, where do things go. The next thing that we brought up is we need to, to verify that the configuration of the app broker is suitable for our system. We'll do that using the app broker service manager. So what I'm going to do is go through a quick PowerPoint, and then we'll fire it up, and we'll go through some of the settings, the important settings. So managing the app broker service. A little typo there. Program used to control the app broker service. It's installed in the root of the app broker folder. When you start up, that's the screen you'll see. So if you double click app broker service manager exe, there is the, the window you'll see. And what does it allow you to do? Well, you can install or remove the service. So if for some reason you needed to, to take the service out, maybe you've removed the folder and you need to remove the service before you do that and put it into a different folder. You can start and stop the app broker service. There are times during the development cycle you might need to do that if you're repeatedly replacing the binaries and you might find that they're, they're marked as in use by the OS. You can importantly configure the ports that you use for normal HTTP traffic and for secure traffic HTTPS. And you can adjust folders that are used, although the defaults work just fine. You can specify security settings. And you can actually uh, launch the App Broker Remote Admin page, which you can also access directly via your web browser, but it's conveniently able to open it right from the App Broker Service Manager. So this is the most important screen most of the time, at least for getting started. And that's where you confirm that your ports are set correctly. And by correctly, I simply mean that if you are running another server, if you have an instance of IIS or Apache running a new system, then you need to ensure that the app broker is listening on different ports or the traffic will never reach the app broker or vice versa. It may not reach Apache or IIS. As an example, this is configured for 8080 for the standard port, for standard HTTP traffic. Most of the time, I use port 80. I just temporarily disable Apache if I have it running. And that way, I can do my testing just referring to local host, which by default maps back unless you change it to use port 80. You can see also you can set a default home page. The default home page is where someone will go if they access the app broker IP without any extended URI to identify the resource they want. It's also where a user will end up if they exit your web app. We've got our public directory, which we talked about in the video covering the app broker structure. It houses our JavaScript and our CSS files, as well as uh, some other files that we'll talk about, basically image files in particular icon files, which we're going to tell you that you really need to convert those to PNG if you want to assure that they'll look correct and actually maybe even display at all. Some browsers don't support those. In our skeleton directory, there's also some options. We'll go over in a different video about debugging. We can set up logging and uh, do some debugging as needed. Security settings is one of the options in the main menu. Uh, it shows the default username. In fact, that one cannot be changed. It allows you to set a remote server password. Also specify your SSL file, certificate file. So when you first ran the installer, you were asked to identify and specify the port numbers the broker to listen on. If you didn't have it already installed, it will default to port 80 and port 443, respectively. Again, if you need to change the ports, just start the App Broker Manager and press that Change Server Settings button. 
And at that point, you should stop and restart the service to ensure that it actually is using the port you just changed to. So now we'll jump over and we'll run it and explore further settings. So here's two options you'll use frequently. The service is currently running, as it indicates down here. If you need to stop it to replace binaries or for any other reason, just press that button. The service settings, we just talked about that. And uh, I won't go into any further detail on that. It's covered. Security, we looked at that as well. You can set a remote access password. And our default home page, that would be the index.htm as we specified on the service settings. In the remote admin page, where we can make sure that's still in the video, where we can modify some of the setups information and we can suspend or resume applications. So if you have applications already running, you've deployed them, you want to update the binaries, you can suspend the applications so temporarily users will be unable to do any further work until you replace the binaries. Enable, of course, is the reverse of suspend. And you can check and see how many sessions are currently running. So the App Broker Service Manager, it is your second step after you apply the, after you've web enabled your, your application using the global extension, you will verify the configuration. And then at that point, you're ready to deploy. It's really very simple and it's really very quick to do. So I'll conclude this video. In the next video, we'll actually just walk right through deploying of a web app. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.